Right, so here I am at home. Don't really like to record videos at home. It doesn't feel as comfortable as it, as it does at work, to be fair. But I thought, no better time than while I'm off sort of Saturday afternoon and Sunday to try and plug this thing in. I'm going to disconnect something Ethernet-wise from the router. We've got every junction is uh, occupied at the moment, so the um, PS5 will probably have to take a hit for a little bit. And we'll plug this in, and this will sit here under my telly, reminding me that I need to use it and I need to learn it. I've got the um, Don Audio Focus 10s here as well, so they're a room-ready speaker, and we should be able to um, do whatever it is that it's going to do for us. So I've got to plug the power in, turn it on, plug the Ethernet in, stuff like that. All seems relatively simple. And then I'm going to start learning about the software, where I need to get it from, what I need to do, what I need to pay for, how much it costs, things like that. Um, but first step. Oh, don't kick this. I just I just kicked it. It was on the floor. And um, it took me about 10 minutes longer to start this video than it should have because hellfire. Yeah, all right. Good afternoon. It's episode two of my rune mission. I've been using it a fair bit. I'm going to explain how I use it or how I have been using it, what it's bringing to the table for me, and I'm going to explain some of the steps, some of the initial steps you'll have to go through to uh, get on the uh, the rune web of, uh, or get into the rune web of finding your music and uh, yeah, and, and, and using it. So let's dip in. So first things first, as I mentioned in my previous video, it does cost. So it is something that costs to manage things that you either pay for already, streaming services, or to manage your sort of solid state collection of music, digital of course, that can be streamed online. So um, costs wise, so it's 12 99 per month if you don't subscribe for a year, so just month on month. And that's dollars by the way. It's 9 99 per month if you do subscribe annually. They'll just break it down over the, over the year. And it's $699 for a, for a lifetime. 699 sounds like a lot of money. Um, I get that. So you'd have to consider whether you're whether you want to manage your music in this way. Now what I can say is there are plenty of sort of trial periods, you know, there's I got a pass with my nucleus my uh, my my room nucleus which was 12 months free. I think they do sort of month long free trials. That trial is just it, it's just a trap. Uh, you know, once you've been using it, it's not. Um, I, I don't think you'll come out of it because, uh, like I say, I've been using it now for for, for around maybe a month, maybe three weeks, and I, I can't see myself ever not using it now. Uh, I actually can't wait to bring it back here because all of the endpoints we have here, it will just go and, and we'll be able to play. You can play simultaneously. You can play just the one unit, and it's all in just the nicest quality you. Can, you can have, you know? So, yeah, anyway, they're the subscriptions. First things you will need to do are, um, of course, whatever nucleus, whether you build your own one, whether you buy a rune core, you know, from ourselves, you'll have to plug it in. So, you plug it in, you connect up to it, RJ45 or Cat5, and the power socket, turn it on, whether it's rocker switch or it's push, kind of push to make switch on the back and uh, you use your remote. So your remote will be your phone, your laptop, um, kind of all bases covered there. You, you, you can have the Rune sort of remote software uh, on pretty much anything. So whatever you, however you want to control the music in your property or in your listening area is what you would have your Rune remote on. So once those two are linked up, you know, you, you will, you will of course, search for that in the Rune remote. The Nucleus will then prompt you to create an account. So you create an account with Rune. You tell them what you want to do. You know, you tell them what, what sort of subscription you want, what your plan is. And, of course, I had a, uh, a voucher for a 12 months um, subscription for free. Uh, so that's where I input that. And then it's kind of, and then it's kind of all on you. I mean, there's a lot of automated stuff that goes on. 
So uh, the next window, I do believe from memory, you it, it asks you about the genres of music that you would like. So you uh, you know you select. For me, it would be indie rock, older hip hop, things like that. Some electronica, no sort of folk and classical because uh, although I do listen to that I don't want it within the algorithm so it just is constantly pushing music like that towards me so yeah so that that's kind of you you get your opportunity there to tell it what to actively sort of look for and serve to you when you open the remote when you open the sort of controller window you know and that window is say similar to uh, streaming apps and stuff so it's similar to um, to iTunes or to to Tidal or anything like that, so it, it it it's it's easily the best looking musical sort of front of house uh, that I've ever seen. It's very clean. It's very logical. It's nice to understand. It's not it's not cheesy in any way. It's a very classy approach. It's, it's got a very uh, this will scare some people off, but it's got a very Apple like simplicity to the um, like I say the sort of musical front of house to the product. So. Yeah, and, and then you're in, and um, yeah, and that process for me couldn't have been easier. Everything I've just discussed there took me probably 15 minutes from from getting it out of the box to plugging it in where you can see it, you know, in the centre of my sort of AV rack, and uh, and and setting it up, signing into the account, adding in the genres of music that I would want to be served if I wanted anyway. You can skip that, you know. Um, was super simple, super slick to do. No one, I think, would have to learn anything to get to that point, you know, which is good because the next stage is playing music. Your nucleus then searches your network for products, you know, products that are in your house. Now, I'm a little bit greedy in my house, so I have a lot of stuff. Uh, each of the systems, sorry, each of the rooms in my house, other than our hallway, and has a dedicated system with stereo uh, speakers in, in the ceiling. So um, each one of those amplifiers, because I have them individually in each room, uh, the Nucleus picked up. It also picked up my AV receiver, it picked up my TV, which surprised me. Um, it picked up my Hegel H390, and uh, of course my, um, my Dyn Audio Focus 10s. Which I'll come to in a second. This is a, a you know a separate topic that I'd like to discuss. So um, yeah, picked everything up, and I just had to go into the menu system within the Rune Remote and select which one I wanted to enable. You can able you can enable and disable however many you like. So if you don't want anyone messing around with anything, you can just enable I don't know your Focus Tens and and disable everything else. Um, but for multiple accounts or not multiple accounts, but for multiple people in the same house. They, if they want to play in the bathroom, which we do, it's, it's probably the most used system in our house, but um, if we want to play in the bathroom, in the kitchen diner, and I don't know, say I'm listening to music in the living room, um, we can do that simultaneously. You know, it has the power to send different music from different people to different places within the house. So this is this was my first hurdle. So. I uh, had recently unboxed the Focus 10, the new Dyn Audio Focus 10, and my primary objective was to run them as a Rune endpoint. I wanted to use the Nucleus and the remote to those speakers, N not because, uh, you know, of course I wanted to use the Dyn Audio remote because I, I wanted to review the speaker um, just so I can get to know it, so I can get behind it, and then we can offer it, you know, to you guys. But I wanted to use it as a a rune system specifically for me to use rune and I couldn't I couldn't because um, for about two weeks there hadn't been an update to the focus the Dyn Audio focus product that enabled the rune ready state you know and this comes into the the rune ready rune tested or rune anything else um, on that side of the fence if you have a product that isn't specifically licensed by Rune Labs to, to a Rune ready state, regardless of whether it says it in the manufacturers of the other product, of the receiving product, um, regardless of whether it says it in their specs, you won't be able to use it. You won't, it will not be able to be enabled because it is not Rune ready. It doesn't matter if 
it's room ready and it will be in six months and we just need to do a software update. I've seen people fall in that trap a few times in the past with all the other sorts of stuff. It was usually AirPlay because Apple's licensing is difficult and expensive to get um, and there's a lot of products that were launched with AirPlay. We, we've been asked to remove videos from our YouTube channel because we've mentioned the AirPlay state that the product has because I've swiped down and pressed play on AirPlay then the product hasn't even got a license. So there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff like that that goes on with Rune. It tends to get banded around a lot of people. Now, Dyne uh, Rock Solid, I knew they were Rune ready, um, and I'd spoken to them, uh, which as I do all the time, and uh, they, they were sort of like, well, you know, you, you shouldn't be having that problem because they're a full Rune ready set. So I reset the speaker. I just completely reset it back to factory settings, turned it on, and uh, lo and behold, it changed from my, um, it changed in the Rune, because it was in the Rune ready box, because Rune sections them out to whether it's an AirPlay device or whether it's a Rune ready device. Uh, it's it, it, it sectioned it out as a, there was a bit of a, it's quite an aggressive red writing, you know, this product is not under license. And it changed like that, you know, when I'd reset the speaker. So I don't know if it's something in turning the speaker on, it just needed, I don't know, maybe it needed, turning on at a different time god knows but once i had powered them down i did a factory reset you know once i powered them down and turned them back on they were straight in and that you know like i said this is a couple of weeks later so that was the first hurdle i had for the for the first probably week and a half of me having uh probably week and a half to two weeks of me having the room nucleus on my uh you know on my bench i could only send sound to airplay devices around the house of which there are plenty so you know we could still make everything work but it wasn't fully it wasn't full fat it wasn't what i wanted you know so um yeah whereas now i have you know uh, as i've just explained um full you know they're, they're a full room ready speaker the whole focus line is um but you've just got to be careful i, I would say if you're going to buy a rune nucleus or if you're going to get into rune make sure that whoever has said that they are rune ready that they are rune ready that they're not rune ready but we need to do a software update or that they're rune ready in 2025 you, you need to check that so there's a little bit of um i imagine i imagine what needs to happen is a manufacturer approaches rune and says you know we want rune ready status on this well they pay them x amount of money but they also test the kit they need to know that that full fat stream is going to get to a place where it will be a full fat output, you know. It's not just a, a badge to help someone sell a product, you know. At the end of the day, you know, runes are, runes are a relatively niche thing within the world. There's around 100,000 users. It's good to see that sort of integrity from somebody like Rune early on because I'd imagine they could just be grabbing money left, right and centre and selling their badge to all sorts of people and it's something that I actually practice within this business, you know. Yeah, it's nice to see. So, anyway, that's the, that's the Focus 10 that we're streaming to and the 390 and once you do have that stream on the go, like well, once you have a rune ready endpoint and the nucleus, it couldn't be simpler, it couldn't be faster. You know, I open the remote, which is my iPad or my phone, so I have the same on, on both. Um, I select in the bottom right, which is always there, so it's not, it's not like it removes it on certain windows. I select what output I want, so what endpoint, if I want the living room for the Focus 10, or if I want the Dyn Audio stuff in the kitchen, um, or if I want the Hegel H390. I can select whichever one it is, and I can just press play on what I want to play, and it'll go to that endpoint really quickly. I'm, I'm really surprised, considering these things have to come from the net, through the nucleus, which is a computer at the end of the day, forward that to another product, another Rune Ready product, whilst passing all the, the Rune Readiness and, and, and everything like that, and whilst keeping everything full fat, we're playing in in a second, in under a second in, in some cases, you know. So, had it been laggy and slow, that would have been a big X mark for me. That That, that, that would have not been a positive at all. Um, if it was in any way cumbersome, in any way, I would let you know. You know, it's 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 really quick and simple to use. Um, very, although I'm although I am techy and and I love gadgets, I love tech, I love the sound. Uh, of course, as you know, I'm not. You know, I don't I don't know what certain protocols are and what they do I, I i'm i'm not that I'm, I'm not necessarily interested in anything like that so if something were to go wrong with something in depth 
or something that was supposed to be simple was was difficult to do to me it's hard to get over that um, and it's uh, you know then a non enjoyable experience and I get wound up yeah so you know but it hasn't been that it's been an absolute joy to get to the point where I'm at now so like I say this is episode two I don't I can't discuss any of the sort of technicalities of it because I've not got there yet how I use it so which is an important one as I've said from my iPad from my phone which is an Apple phone so it's you know that is the only Apple part of my life but I just like the way their mobile devices work um, and I I scooch through I scooch about I logged into my Tidal um, I don't have anything connected to the nucleus so I don't have any solid state stuff done at the moment I haven't got to that point and when I do I, I'm, I'm expecting I'll I'll meet a few things that I have to do uh, you know in order in file management or anything like that but I, I've heard stories I, I think one of our um, one of the comments on our previous video about Rune was um, was that they had plugged in their device and it just hoovered in all of this music that was already on their network and things from their iTunes and stuff and it pulled so much music in that they'd forgotten about that you know it was just a, a revelation that hasn't happened to me unfortunately and it's probably because I don't have my iTunes clouded and available on my network and stuff like that or, or I imagine it would because I've spent thousands on iTunes sort of pre 2010 when you used to buy music you didn't just use to rent it you know a great reset um, yeah so I'm having a great time with it I really am and uh, ho hopefully those few things that I have said you know about the logins about the sign you know uh, about the genres and how it wants to learn you before you get started and how simple I've been able to send sound around it's like a high-end sound distribution center like a high-end sound manifold it just you can pipe it wherever you want in your home as long as there are room endpoints around the place and it will just do that job it, it you, you can control the volume of your system in there control of course whatever tracks you want to play uh, your suggested you know advancements on them tracks you know with 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 different different albums different associated playlists you know of course you can pause and play and things and you know, all the standard stuff that you can do in a normal streaming app but you can do it in your bedroom while you're in the living room you know you, you can it's got a great CI a custom install so a sort of smart home benefit to it that I didn't consider I only had it down for a two channel thing I, it was it was a source unit to me um, but it really isn't you know it's it's much it's much much bigger than that so I'm gonna carry on learning and hopefully you know bring a little bit more to the table I've got to start delving deeper into root another thing as well um, which is which is fantastic is Rune's community everyone that is into it seems to be really switched on with one another they they, they, they seem to get on quite well and there's always a an offering for advice when people have any problems now I don't think I've had any problems up until now um, I did go into the sort of Rune Labs community forum uh, when I couldn't enable the Dyne Audio Focus 10s because I knew they were Rune tested and it seems it was me having a uh, having a um, I don't know a software problem. Oh, I'm not too sure, but they certainly weren't, and I'm, I may have it on video. But you know, and, and everyone seemed to be quite positive with one another, and that's always a nice thing to be into is when you know or can rely, hopefully, on somebody else being able to offer advice um, to you know help you through any snags that you have, but. I really just can't see you having any art. I, I, I haven't had one. I, I'm enjoying it, you know. I haven't played music in my house since in any other way. So I'm always using Rune. My wife uses it to put music on for the dog when we go to work. She she does that. Um, my daughter uses it at uh, the bathroom. And uh, yeah, I, yeah, seamless. It's just wicked. So yeah. I know I haven't discussed things like um, things like the sound quality, things like why an audio file uses Rune. You know, I'm discussing the lifestyle element of it at the moment because it's the only thing that I've I've encountered. Um, I can tell you now, it sounds incredible. Like, but I need to look further into why, um, into how you can get it wrong, uh, if you can get it wrong, um, how you can get it right if there's certain settings in there. There's all sorts of EQs, all sorts of DSP stuff in there that I don't want to cover as early as episode two 
because like, like I said in episode one I'd like to take people that are in the same position as me on the same path uh, on the same sort of timeline you know because I, because I haven't got there yet myself so um, yeah anyway that is rune episode two from a complete novice to now a superstar rune star. I'm, I'm only joking, I'm only joking. Uh, you know, to someone who now loosely understands what rune is and the benefits it has in my house. All right? Thank you. Take it easy. I'm Carl. It's a Studio In Car with another Studio Hi Fi video talking about rune. This motorbike's only moving when I talk.